The story started a decade ago. The young Kush, the 15 year old Kush with his bini, with his majestic hair. There was no hair on his face yet, but he still had other majestic things. Just like this Galaxy A3, as I like to call it, Iron Man's phone, because it was unbreakable. Literally, I got into a beef with my dad because I took my phone to school, the Galaxy A3 BBM days, and he threw it out of the window because he got pissed when he picked me up and he went from car from it. He picked it up, nothing happened. And my dad was burning and I was hugging my phone with my life. These kind of phones are not made anymore because it is bad for business. You can literally set this phone on fire, swim with it, uh, step on it, uh, pee on it, uh, shit on it. Nothing will happen to it. With his skinny jeans and his curled up shirt with those skinny arms. Little did young Kush knew he was about to be arrested that year. It was just a normal day, me chilling with my friends. We had a specific place we always used to go to. The area, me and my friends, we used to chill a lot. It was like a small area, like a center, where there was restaurants, food, games, whatever. We used to chill here, and next to it exactly was a compound of a lot of villas. Now, the country that I live in, some of you know where I live, but paired to this story, it is not allowed for me to share these things, my interaction with the government, so... I'm not gonna mention where I stay. I'll, I'll just say it's in the Middle East. It was just another night, me and my friends wasting our time talking about the girls that we will never get, making fun of each other, roasting each other, and showing off our new chains. It was the six of us, then it got to midnight. Three of us decided to leave. So it was left with me, one of my close friends, and my friend's friend. I didn't knew the other guy. The description I'm gonna give about my best friend's friend he had a lot of big expensive chains this is keep this in mind this is going to be a big part of the story now my best friend lived in this compound so we all decided to you know what it's the three of us let's just walk at the compound and let's explore the area at like midnight this is the garden surprisingly i took art class in high school but i just took it to skip class as you can see as we came to the area we came across a garden that had a football ball inside for my um, for my american friends soccer bro i can't i can't even draw a circle yeah, that's the best I can do. As we came across this soccer ball, we were like, you know what? Let's do one, two. I'm about to show you some of my freestyle moves. Yes. I, I know. I know what you're thinking. Kush, I didn't know you did football freestyle. Yes, I could have. I did all these movements with my head and I did around the world a lot of the time. <laughs> I had girls left and right waiting to take my signature and I was like, ladies, please, one by one. That's what I thought when I started doing football freestyle. Now my friend's friend decided to, you know what, let me just jump over the garden, go inside, trespass and get this ball. We're going to play with it and we're going to bring it back after like 20 minutes once we're bored. So it was kind of like a boring situation, but you know, illegally, but you know, we had no bad intentions about the situation. We just wanted to play and bring it back, put it back. But what happened next? Took us all by surprise, and it became a crime. Literally, caught 4K. We saw a man walking in our direction, and we thought he's just gonna, gonna walk past us, look at us, and be like, "Look at these dumb teenagers! What are you doing? What do they think they're doing?" And shit like that. It was not gonna bother us. Little did we know, it was actually his house. So my friend, he was already in the garden. Okay, this is getting too much. My friend was already in the garden. This guy walked up and be like, what are you doing in my garden? Now, the language he was speaking was not English. It was some other language. And my friend's friend spoke that language. But he told them in the same language that he does not speak that language. Are, are you catching up? That is when the beef and the heat started between the two. And my friend's friend, the guy with a lot of chains, he wanted to fight with the owner of the house. And me and my friend, we were like, what the hell is happening? Let's not let this escalate. So we separated the two. We were like, calm down. And the, obviously the a guy, the homeowner, he was like in his 30s. He's not going to beat up a 15 year old. I mean, there was no cameras. Cameras, I guess we'll never know. The owner of the house started raising his voice and then quickly a couple of securities ran towards our direction now what as a 15 year old teenager what do you do when uh, you're about to get caught you are fast as fuck you have so much energy now i cannot i cannot even walk whenever i walk from here to my kitchen i make a lot of noises and my fucking back crack every time i move but as a 15 year old with healthy lungs and healthy organs you can run as fast as you can but in that case my best friend who was you know with us he lived in that compound and the securities, you know, know him. So he was like, if we run, we're all going to get caught, 
cut either way. He was like, calm down, I'll talk to them, I'll, you know, calm things down, and, you know, we, we can just, you know, wrap this up, apologize, and go home. You know, we're dumb teenage kids, and no one's going to, you know, do anything to us. The owner of the house got so pissed, he was like, I don't want securities, I want the police. That is when shit got serious, and securities were forced to take us to the police station, which was, which was a very small police station in the compound that we lived in as well. There was like a very tiny place like under the center the center the area we used to all hang out under on the parking section there was a police station there so we had to be taken there and then once we got there it was very it was like 2 3 a.m there was just a captain of the police station with his flip-flops and his, like a t-shirt he was just chilling with his legs on the table he came he, he knew what we did he was like he called his um the people who worked for him, who were under him, they were undercover cops. There were two of them. They took our hands and they took us to the main police station of the, you know, the area, the city. They took us in an undercover car as well. Once we got there, they took our fingerprints. They took our uh, eye picture. We took all the pictures. Why? Because we're about to be banned from that compound and we cannot go anywhere near it. The process took about an hour and, you know, my best friend and his friend, they started making jokes with the undercover cops because they were like, they were like chill as well. They were in their early 20s and they were just, we were just talking, making jokes and things like that. Process finished, get in the car, back to the station. I forgot to mention before we head to the main station, our phones, wallets, chains, whatever, watches, everything was taken away for us, from us and they were all put it in an envelope because we were, we were being processed. So the things are there. We got back to the station. They were like, okay, you're processed and you're banned from this area since you're 15 and the guy is like forgave you. So you just go and don't do it again. I was like, oh, thank you so much. We will not do it again. I, sw I swear we will not do it again. So I took my, you know, Galaxy A3 I Iron Man phone. I took my $3 watch and I took my uh, sexy ass Binny. I was like, I am out of here. I was waiting for my best friend and uh, my other friend to pick up their stuff and put it on as well. Now, my best friend, he was ready. When he came to his friend, the guy who wanted to start the fight, this is where I said, remember the chain situation. As it comes out, I found out later on that all these chains that he's, he had, it was allegedly stolen. So he told everyone that it is stolen, it is expensive. And I was shocked. I was like, this guy doesn't work. His dad isn't rich. How does he, he how, how can he own these kind of chains? As he was putting the chains back on, my best friend started bursting out laughing in front of the captain of the police station. Why? Because the idea was the police are letting, giving back the stolen stuff and he's putting the stolen chains back and he's like, and no one knows about it. That was the funny part. And the scientists have not still discovered why when your friends laugh, you automatic, automatically laugh as well. There's something about it, even if the joke is not funny, even if I did not understand anything. I just saw my friend laughing, automatically you start laughing as well. My best friend and his his friend, they bursted out laughing in front of the police captain. What I did was saved my life and saved a lot of uh, humiliation, I would say. I put my head down and I laughed my ass off, but without making any reaction, as if I was like, who are, why are these guys laughing and things like that. The police captain saw the two and they were like, you are laughing at a police captain? Mohammed, bring the key. I swear to God, 4 a.m., he bought a key this big, and he was like, lock them up. Making fun of a police officer, 48 hours jail. Now, in the Middle East, the rules are a bit strict. You cannot, there's a lot of, like, respect comes with it. It's not like the U.S. where you can talk back at them or make fun of them or call them a pig or things like that. Here, it is totally different culture, totally different thing. The undercover cops that we were with, they came, they brought the key. He, so he, the captain was like, take these two, put them in a cell. He took them, put them in the cell. Before they stepped inside the cell, the second I heard the door open, both my friends, the other guy wasn't my friend, but for the sake of the story, they both started crying like little bitches. Out of nowhere, and I got scared. I was like, what are they doing? Are they getting shatak? I could hear their screams. I don't want to go inside. I don't want to go inside. I don't want to go inside. Later on, I found out that the cell that they were going in, it was so dark. You couldn't see anything. And you see like a, a guy or two just sleeping at the end of the, in the corner. And it was like a jungle, basically, a very dark jungle. I was freaking out. For a good 30 minutes, they were crying and screaming. I did not know what was happening to them. I did not know the, I did not know the description of the cell. So what I did was the captain was playing his game. He was playing a racing card game. I could hear him drifting with his leg up on the desk. 
I asked him, Sir, can I know what is happening to my friends? I am a little bit worried. He looked at me dead in the eye and he was like, they are playing PlayStation. Do you want to go and play with them? I was like, my friend, I am, I am happy here. I, let them enjoy PlayStation. How is your game? How many levels are you at? Are you good at the game? I've never sold my friends that fast and let them suffer in that situation. Now, they brought them out after like 30, 40 minutes while they was crying and they were like, call your parents. We need, because since they're in, underage, then we need to call the parents. Now, my uh, best friend, he was crying and he was like, I can't call my parent. My dad will kill me. And he called his big brother. His big brother was on the way. The other guy as well, he was crying. Please do not. I don't want to call my dad. I don't want to call my dad. He's going to kill me and blah, blah, blah. He ended up calling it while he was crying and he was apologizing the, all the way through. It came my turn. Because, you know, someone had to pick me up from the police station. My dad picked up the phone, 5 a.m., pissed, because he had to wake up from his beauty sleep. He asked me what happened. I was like, I'm in trouble, I'm arrested. He was like, what happened? I summarized the story for him. You know what he said? He was like, you did this, you will learn from this. I don't care if you are in jail. I don't care if you are here. You will learn from this. And if they release you, you're going to walk home. Now, keep in mind, I lived 30 minutes away with car. Walking, it was going to take like two, three business days. As we are, the two went back in the cell. I'm sitting. My uh, best friend's brother came. The other guy's dad came. As I am sitting, no one is with me. They both took them home. I forgot to mention this part of the story. The brother and the other guy's dad, they had to beg the police captain to let them go, saying how stupid they are, how they're so young, they don't understand these things. So for a good 20, 30 minutes of begging, the captain was like, all right, fine, give them their stuff, kick them out of the station. And the, the brother and the dad, they didn't even look at me. They were so pissed at all of us. As we got released at 6 a.m., I ended up calling one of my friends who lived in the area. And I crashed at his place, woke up, and then that was a story to remember. It's not something I'm proud of. It was just something that, it, it was funny. But it was a good memory to remember, I would say. Now, there's all the other stories about me almost getting deported from the country. I've My teenage years were crazy. Even in my early 20s, I have a lot of crazy stories. Let me know if you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, yes, definitely. We're going to make more videos like this. Now, if you are bored and you don't know what else to do and this amazing story has ended, you see these two videos? Go binge watch. Yalla, take care. Bye.